everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. But this is the Ferris wheel. As you can see here, I'm just showing you one of the examples. I'll bring in the rest in a moment. You get eight cute little characters that you can use across the three rides. You can personalise these. You can put real photos of your family in them. And I've already seen many of you using your own stash to pop in the baskets and they look really sweet. So I've just got a few different kind of colourways here. I've got the pastels, the pink those bold kind of primary colours and then I've got this orange and uh, turquoise one and then you can also use it on a card blank so this is a seven by seven card blank I created a scene it's just a top fold tenth fold so you can use them in other ways and I have some more tutorials to show you on how to you know use this die in other ways so first of all what you want to do is die cut the main ferris wheel so I've actually die cut this three times two of those are stuck together and then one is just the single piece and you can see you've got that embossed detail on there you've got all the holes that you need but I'm just flicking that one that's the two that I've stuck together so they're nice and strong and then that other one is going to go on the back later on next you want to die cut the stand so I've die cut in this yellow color and you can see it's shaped so it will fit within the next section well, that's more of the support for the sand, for the stand, should I say. This is the stand piece here. So you get the larger die. You want to die cut two of those. And then you get the smaller one, which is to die cut the decoration, really. So you can use it for, you know, with pattern paper. You want to die cut one of them in white because one will go on the back, which is the one I'm showing you there. And that's your space to write your message. And you'll see it fits nicely there and it will cover that little hole. And again, I'll show you more to that in a moment. That one there, I've actually just embossed. I just ran it through my, um, used my scoreboards, sorry. And I used every track on the scoreboard just to create a bit of detail. These two here are for the sentiment. And you can see I've pulled out the roll up, let's celebrate stamp from the coordinated stamp set. And then you will also want to die cut yourself some of the washes. Now, I don't actually use the washes in the video. You don't have to. We put them in there just because not everybody's going to have the same brads. You know, some people just different ways that people might put this together in different card weights. We just thought putting the washes in will help you get a better swing if you feel you need to. And then I've also die cut double so I've die cut 16 of the baskets now the reason being is you obviously want to put eight on the front and then I need to cover the back so it just looks nice from the back so you can see here I've just got my eight little critters I'm popping them in the front and then I'm going to use the other one to stick on the back so that when someone looks at the back of the card it looks nice and neat so it is optional if you want to cut 16 but you definitely need eight so I'm just there sticking down all of those critters, just using a little bit of quick grab glue just on the bottom half of them. And then I'm just sitting them, you know, behind the basket. If you kind of roll their arms or curve their arms a little bit, then they hang over the basket as well. And you'll see as I stick one behind, I'm putting the back one with it because they're all different designs. So I'm just pairing them together there so I know which one goes with which when I come to stick that all together. So, so they're now all stuck in the baskets and then I'm just adding glue now all over the back and then I'm popping the other basket and you can just see there it just encloses them and just keeps them nice and neat. It also will add more weight which will help them swing as well. So I definitely recommend that you do this but it is optional if you decide you don't want to. Once you've got them all ready, you want to pick your brads. You can see I've already got my eight brads just in the middle top of the screen there. So I've gone back to the wheel where I've stuck two of them together and I use the Kalau all-purpose construction weight glue because, again, that's going to make everything very strong. I'm just popping the brad through the top of the basket and then I'm going to pop it through one of the holes. And then, as I've shown you in the other two of the Fun at the Fair collections, Grab a pokey tool or something to just open up the split pin or the brad and then just use that to fold the one of the sides over and it will just keep it lifted off the cardstock and it will give you, you can see there, that really nice swing. You want them to dangle more than anything. So I'm just going to go through and get the rest of those attached to the wheel in exactly the same way. So now that's all together, I'm going back to the stand. So I've already stuck that piece that I just embossed using my scoreboard. And then you, you will have a very small line at the top. You want to fold that over. Now it is small because we need it to sit above the hole because we need that brad to be able to move. So we don't want anything obstructing it. So you just want to fold both of those over. I've used um, about a 220 GSM cardstock. Heavier the better. But because you're putting a matte layer on top of both of these pieces, and again, I'm using that Kalau construction glue, it just strengthens everything. So it feels like it's like a 350 GSM by the time you've finished with it. So I'm just adding some of my quick grab glue just along that small tab at the top and you're going to stick those two pieces together. So you just want to line them up, make sure they're nice and straight 
And then when you kind of fold them together, just line up the bottom as well, just to keep it all, you know, in that perfect shape. You don't want it wonky at this stage. And I'm just using my bone folder there just to make sure that glue's all secure. And you'll see now when you open that up, how that's joined together. So just give that a minute to dry. You really want to make sure that's nice and secure. Next, you've got that base kind of support. So you want to do a mountain fold, a valley fold. So the middle score line will be a valley and then the two outer score lines will be mountain folds. And you'll see it's shaped in the, on the same angle as the stand piece. So it will hide nicely behind that. Next, I'm adding some glue to one of those sides and we're going to attach one half inside the stand. So I'm just opening that up and you want to line up the longest flat side with the bottom of that stand piece. Give that a minute to dry and then add some glue along the top section there. Again, this is that all purpose. I just use my own bottle, but I'll link it in the description box below for anybody that doesn't know which one I mean, because there's a few in the range. Then just fold that piece down and again, just hold that there for a moment. I've put my pencil sharpener on top just so that can dry while I'm doing the next stage. Next, I'm using that same glue and I'm just popping it in between all of my little baskets there or the brads and I'm also going to go through the middle bits as well. Now if you want you can put foam pads in between each section if you want it to be lifted. So again if you're worried that maybe your baskets aren't swinging the way you would like if you pop foam in between there that's just going to ensure nothing's really kind of stopping those brads moving. Now you'll show, I'll show you there that you can offset that wheel as well but I'm just going to keep it all lined up but there's no reason why you can't offset it. So I'm just now sticking that all down again. Give it a minute. Make sure that's all completely dry before you move on to the next step. Popping another brad through that middle and then through the stand. And again, just using my pokey tool there just to open up the brad and just bend it over each side. And again, you just want that to be able to move nice and freely. And you'll see now that you get a really nice spin. Just check everything's OK. And um, this is the best time to really check all this because you've still got time to be able to take it off. These are very small little five mil foam dots. They're from the Stick It range, I believe. Again, I'll link as much as I can in the description box, but they were perfect for the size brads that I'm using in this. Now on the back, just make sure that the brad is li lining up there nice and um, horizontal with the top of the stand. And then I'm just adding again some more glue to that white piece. If you want to stamp on this, do this beforehand. So if you've got another little message you want to put on there, then I recommend doing that before you stick it down. And then this one I'm going to stick so the top of it is over the brad. What we want to do is we want to secure the brad. You could put some tape there first and then stick it over the brad. But you want to stop the brad from moving around if you want your sentiment to stay nice and lined up on the front. If not, then don't worry. But you'll see now I've taken the back end off that foam little dot and I'm sticking my sentiment in the middle. And now when I spin the wheel, the sentiment stays in place. If it moves, it means the glue's still wet. Mine was moving a little bit there, so it just needed a bit more time to dry. But you'll see now that moves, but the sentiment stays nice and straight. So that's that card. I hope it's helped you. For those of you that have purchased it, a huge thank you to everybody, as always, that supported me. I will share pictures to all of this collection over on my Facebook page and you'll see some pictures coming up now as well. If you are new to Made to Surprise or new to my channel, check the links that will be coming up now. Make sure you also subscribe to my channel and I have set up a brand new Made to Surprise YouTube channel. There's no videos there yet. I'm slowly going to be transferring them all over and that will be a designated area for all the Made to Surprise tutorials and I've got lots that I want to share because there's so many other ways that you can use my dies. So as always, thank you for watching and I'll be back again very soon. Bye.